Hey guys, so I haven't done commentary over uh, real life duels in quite some time, but basically Ruggles uh, hosted a few of us uh, YouTubers and players just to play some Yu-Gi-Oh, which was very very nice of them. And so today I am going up against the one and only uh, Ryan Yu, who is of course an incredibly good player and I've had the pleasure of being able to face him many times uh, through locals and everything. Uh, not so much in the recent uh, times, but he just always kicks my ass. So he's playing uh, some form of uh, Medulce Vernasulf uh, deck, which is uh, from what I understand is a very anti-meta strategy against the least tiers. Uh, I decided to kick it back with Cyber Dragons for this one. Now keep in mind, I've not played Cyber Dragons in real life play in, in like over half a year, so I'm gonna be very rusty. Uh, basically, Ryan uh, did start first, but he bricked and he just sets one pass. I am gonna start with the Disc Colosseum and add that Therian King Regulus. Uh, next, I will play the Cyber Emergency, uh, and then I, I'll probably just get the Cyber Dragon Quarry here. So we will uh, summon the quarry, try to use its effect, unfortunately it is met by Valor, which is very very tough because uh, not only does it negate the effect to search, but now that it is no longer Cyber Dragon, when you, if you were to use Machine Dupe, uh, it just uh, isn't gonna, you know, be use useful because it's just gonna bring out the uh, core. Uh, so now here, <laughs> I decided to go with this play and I wanted to just save the machine dupe. I did have it in hand. Uh, I thought I'd just try it for next turn since he did brick. But unfortunately, I am met with the bestial and uh, as you can imagine, uh, this bestial is just very, very tough on a lot of rogue decks. So I'm just going to set to um, pass and in the end phase, he is going to get the Druid's Worm. The other option I did have was just to like maybe still do machine dupe and you know, uh, I guess like could have went into Phoenix to pop the back row and bring out Therium, but you know what? I decided to go with uh, whatever I thought, but it didn't work out because of the best shield. So he's gonna summon the Hook Cake, try to use its effect to uh, banish the Valor to special. We will just uh, imperm that. So he's just gonna switch the Magma to attack mode. Uh, enter battle and attack into the Almirage. We do have that uh, field spell that can actually help us uh, prevent or at least protect from battle once, and we get the Foolish, so then we can send the Ethereum, which means uh, the other Regulus in our hand, uh, it is now alive again that we can summon, because now we do have a Machine Engrave. Uh, main phase 2, he's gonna link off. Go into the Asa, which puts me in a difficult position, because you know I can destroy it with the uh, Overflow. The problem is he will also get to add when uh, Asa is destroyed, or really any Link charmers that's how they sort of work uh, but he does have the bell and yes you can bell uh, overflow because it does not banish uh, for cost uh, and now he gets my regulus uh, so he gets a negate and I also cannot uh, bring out my regulus right now because I don't have any machines but I believe I top deck a uh, cyber dragon which I do summon here and so that's kind of nice uh, because of course regulus is a machine so I can at least uh, contact fuse away you can also contact fuse away the asa as well but right now my hand is pretty bad and we would try to want to get that negate out of the way and we do go for the fortress which is at 2000 attack uh, we have another core uh, and then we can uh, use that effect to search and finally this time I can resolve uh, now keep in mind I made the misplay I should have summoned up the theory and regulus first I sort of jumped the gun there by mistake uh, again I am very rusty in playing this deck in real life so uh, go easy on me but you know I, I certainly enjoy my, uh, this deck it's my favorite deck and I Certainly wish I had uh, more time to be able to, to uh, run this and other meta decks at the same time. So we're actually going to search the Cyberload Fusion. We do have that core that was banished with the Magma Nut. Uh, and it just enables us to not only destroy the back row, which, well, I guess that was a call by the grave, uh, but just to be able to bring out a big beefy monster uh, and attack multiple times per game. Uh, the Regulus will just go back to hand. Uh, he banished the other Regulus and the grave, which is pretty smart, uh, just to negate that effect until the end of his turn. And uh, Ryan just does concede, and we are going to go right into game two. Alright, so in game two, Ryan uh, is choosing to go first. Uh, oh, sorry, if you're wondering what that is on my arm, <laughs> it's just my mask. I have a habit of uh, just putting around my arm uh, when I take it off. Um, anyways, so we are going second. Uh, so he's going to start off with the Fenrir, uh, which is a very nice addition to this deck. It is an Earth um, monster. Uh, and so he's going to be able to add Fenrir because uh, for some reason they allow Fenrir to add itself. And so definitely watch out for Kashtir in general uh, in the next year when Photon Hypernova comes. Now this is where the Vernasulf cards uh, come up. I 
honestly have a hard time pronouncing it. Uh, that's the bear, basically allows it to draw, and all of these Vernaswolf monsters, uh, it's like you discard a, another monster with it, and then it has a, its own special effect, and it like specials out an earth monster in the graveyard, so this time it's a uh, petting sister. And so, and you can actually bring back uh, Fenrir as well, which is crazy, and he will do that later, I believe, in this match. So he's gonna bring out the Hoot Cake, and then Hoot Cake uh, Banish, sort of like their standard let him play. The Medulce line of play is still there, and he's gonna bring out the Gelato, which now he can actually use its effect, and then it will allow him uh, to add the Trap, which is a pretty nice one. I believe it's one of the more uh, newer support that they received, and not in the initial wave, it basically like negates uh, a card, uh, which is very nice to have, um, because it's pretty versatile. Uh, next, he is going to overlay and go into the uh, Glass Souffle, uh, use that effect, and basically just make it, uh, I believe, unaffected by monster effects. Uh, I'm not too, too familiar with the Medulce strategy, uh, which is definitely going to show in this video because I make uh, pretty bad plays, I think at least. Uh, so now we have the, uh, I believe that's the Flourishing Hills, uh, a little bit hard to tell with the uh, images here. Uh, so here he will just be able to add, I believe he's adding the duck here. And then he also, of course, can special that Earth Monster in the graveyard. And he'll bring out the Gelato. Now, crazy thing is Gelato, turns out, it is not once per turn. It actually uh, happens every time it's special. So now you get to add the Field Spell, which not only gives the stat boost, but it's also pretty nice because anytime the Medulce Monsters would, or monsters in general, I guess, would be shuffled, uh, you can like add it back to hand instead of putting it to the deck. Uh, just allows for a lot of resources. He's going to go into the Link. Uh, which is the cis tart uh protects like the back row which is kind of cool uh which is especially now that now that they do have a good back row and of course uh the like i mentioned earlier the cards will get just shuffled to uh spun back to hand instead of uh, going back into the deck and then he's gonna now use the duck and uh it's pretty cool uh you get to foolish the kello which is sort of where that anti-meta part comes in that i was talking about uh because you can just shuffle things back but it's also very devastating against rogue and uh, that hoot cake is coming back from that burn of effect uh he's gonna set that uh trap and pass turn uh we're gonna start with the imperm on the fenrir i do have droplet and i'm thinking about it although i felt it wasn't really worth it especially when he has that trap uh so we're gonna start with the core and keep in mind i had to do the fenrir because uh Force effect is mandatory, and after that he could banish it, then I don't have the target for uh, Machine Dupe, although he does have, of course, that trap, but then we're also going to chain the droplet so that uh, it misses target, and then we can also negate the uh, Glass Souffle. And uh, Core will still resolve, because of course the trap missed the target, and so we're going to add the Emergency, and right away we're going to use it to just get that hers because we also have the Soldier hers play. Or perhaps I didn't have Machine Dupe in this hand, I might be confusing it. Uh, and so this is where Keldo becomes really, or Medora as well, becomes very strong because he's going to actually uh, shuffle back the core and the hers. Uh, I think I accidentally put it in the banish pile there for a little bit, uh, but it will be going back to the tech deck. And because hers, you know, it was uh, removed uh, from the graveyard before it like, triggered its effect, you're not going to be able to add off of hers. Uh, it's the same thing when it gets like DD, DD Crowed, and also it's essentially the same thing with, you know, how it works with like Ben 10, for example. Uh, so unfortunately, we are only going to be able to add the soldier, uh, which is nothing. And then here we corrected uh, the core and hers are shuffled back in the deck. And core being shuffled back is also very, very impactful because you want that in the grave. Uh, or in your hand preferably but in the grave you would be able to like banish and special if you had an extra i mean if you had a like infinity for example but my graveyard sucks anyway so it doesn't really matter and so he's gonna start his turn he has uh more verna self uh stuff going and i sort of missed uh which one he used actually uh but he adds the uh, uh angeli with it and then because uh of that verna self card he can also summon fenrir as i mentioned earlier in the turn which is uh crazy crazy good uh just and not to mention it can add itself, but I believe he main decks two, or maybe he plays two in general, but that's why uh, he doesn't add with this one. So Soldier unfortunately has uh, zero defense, so uh, we are completely dead. Uh, no need to even use Fenrir's effect, because it's just complete game right there. And so yeah, we will just go right into game three. Alright, and finally on to game three. I decide to just still go second. Uh, I mean, my going first side card is like rivalry isn't very particularly useful against this deck uh it's more so for that tier matchup and this of course uh both rogue decks uh and this one especially is a more anti-meta strategy uh, and i'm talking about the madolce vernasolf of course so ryan is gonna start off with the uh flourishing hills uh, and pitching that uh gelato 
And so he'll be able to add the uh, duck. And then special out that gelato. And then gelato's effect. Or rather, never mind. Uh, he's got, he, right, unfortunately, uh, he actually can't use Gelato's effect yet, because he needs to, uh, usually you need that hoot cake. Uh, anyways, he's going to use that, uh, duck, and just get the, uh, Anjali. And then summon out the flourishing holes. Then normal the Anjali. And then go into Tornado Dragon. Uh, now Anjali's effect, and he's going to be able to special. Uh, the Petting Sister, and then use that effect, special out the Hoo Cake, and then Hoo Cake to banish, the Anjali, and now we get that Gelato, and now we can use Gelato's effect, and get that Trap that will uh, negate cards. Next he's gonna Overlay, go into the Glass Souffle, and so intentionally, he's not putting anything in the extra monster zone. He also said he went to twin, uh, Tornado Dragon, just in case of, you know, something like this Colosseum, but also because of Mystic Mind. But I do not play Mystic Mind because I try my best not to. <laughs> I really hate that card. So we start with the evening. He does have that negate. Uh, it sort of sucks. I'm not sure. Perhaps I could have sequenced this better. Um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, you have to control no cards to be able to play evenly from hand. Uh, so next, we are going to go with the Emergency. And we'll add the core. Then we're gonna normal summon the core. And <laughs> use effect, but unfortunately uh, it is met by Valor yet again, uh, which is unfortunate. Again, uh, Machine Noob would not be very effective if you were to do it on a negated core or negated baby sour dragon. We do pitch the soldier to special out the Naxxer so that we have a fresh new target for that Machine Dupe. And that part uh, resolves at least, uh, which uh, we will bring out the two original cyber dragons because Naxxer is considered as a cyber dragon right now. And now, of course, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Clockwork Knight is coming soon, and that does boost the attack of uh, 500, which means uh, the Baby Cyber Dragons will be too big and you cannot use Machine Noob. Uh, so that's where you might have to switch around your decklist uh, and maybe ditch the Machine Noob variant, but you could still run it, it's just that it does conflict if you have both. And so he does have the Glass Souffle, uh, and he's gonna make Tornado Dragon unaffected, because otherwise, Infinity would be able to just suck it up. And he's also gonna uh, shuffle back uh, with the glass souffle, and then uh, now we're just uh, we don't have many plays here, so we also don't have any uh, like cyber dragon engraved, so we can't use Nova's effect to revive at this point. You do need a valid target first, and so uh, we go into Seeger. Like this is main phase two, obviously. I uh, kind of wanted something to, I guess, uh, I guess uh, be able to have a big attack so I don't die, but it, it kind of is uh, futile really. Uh, and I'm gonna use uh, Nova's effect. I mean, I probably should have just summoned Naxxer and just revive Cyber Dragon as well, because I'm just reviving Cyber Dragon at this point, because I don't have like a hers engrave, uh, which would have been nicer. Uh, I'm just trying to build a wall, so essentially I should have just summoned Naxxer in defense, but use that effect to also uh, special Cyber Dragon just so I have an extra monster. Uh, but realistically, Madolce, you know, when you leave them with a board like this, their clapback game is quite strong. I mean, I didn't really do anything to him, uh, and he just has. A lot of resources to go off and just kill me next turn so i do pass here knowing that i am uh, very much dead <laughs> and who cake uh, is just otk so he's gonna summon the who cake and he'll target uh to banish and again i'm sort of stuck in this situation where you know there's no point to negating because you know it's just gonna get protected by the glass souffle but i mean like what what else can you do uh so uh, we're just gonna go watch and uh, watch Ryan just go off here. Uh, he's gonna get the Petting Sister. So that's gonna come on the field. Uh, the Glass Souffle again. I'll uh, be able to shuffle things back. And then also the Petting Sister. Uh, so he's uh, bringing back the uh, uh, core, at least on my end. Uh, he gets the uh, Anjali. And then Anjali effect to special. And bring out that Gelato. Gelato adds a trap for just in case for insurance policies. But, you know, there's not much for me to do. Next uh, goes into uh, the Queen Tiramisu. Uh, so this is a very good card as well, just being able to shuffle back cards. Uh, so really, really interesting. Uh, it's kind of sad that Medoche, for the last little year and a half, uh, wasn't seeing much play anymore. Uh, back in at least 2020, there was definitely uh, at least like one player on Duel Number who was ranked always high with Medoche, but it just that sort of disappeared. But now with the Vernsoft cards, I guess uh, they can make a comeback because this 
particular list uh, has a pretty good advantage against tier limits. Although, of course, you know, any deck that's not tier limit is Shizu, it's just an uphill battle. Uh, so now, at this point, uh, he has shuffled back the Infinity and the Seeger. So he's going to switch to attack mode. So he'll just start attacking here. Uh, it's not quite game yet, uh, but you know, <laughs> there's not really much for me to come back from this. And so he's going to set one, which we know is the trap. And we have only one card left in hand, which I can't remember what it was. Um, and so we start with the Lightning Storm. Now I'm remembering this, and this is where when I first started with the Evil Knight, I immediately realized I was probably a mistake because I did have the Storm. Uh, so I, yeah, you know. You're just uh, not thinking sometimes. <laughs> uh, so we call monsters. Uh, I mean, he does have the trap that can negate. So either way, I'm sure he would have probably stopped it anyway. So, uh, And I see that in his hand. He also had gamma. So uh, pretty. Uh, I guess this deck runs a decent amount of hand traps. Uh, so our last card is now the Regulus. Uh, not too much uh, for us to do. Uh, we can special it out. And so uh, we'll just bring it out with the Regulus. Uh, Ryan's just gonna use Terrain Dragon. I mean, he, you know, might as well, I guess. There's, I have no cards left in hand. Although that doesn't really do much because Therian can still negate uh, even with that equip destroyed. Uh, but, uh, and I can technically attack over these guys, but their clapback game will just kill me. So, you know, I figure let's go out with the bang. I really don't know the Medulce matchup. Uh, it's pretty clear. I attacked a hoot cake. <laughs> uh, but obviously, the Queen Tiramisu, looking back, would have been the better one because that can just shuffle things back and. Uh, just make things easier for him, but it, in the end, it doesn't matter. Uh, so now Ryan's just gonna start the turn. I uh, use the queen and shuffle back my Regulus, and now attack the game. So yeah, that was it for the match. Uh, hopefully that was at least somewhat interesting. I do apologize for making some misplays. I, again, haven't played Cyber Dragons uh, in real life in quite some time, but always an honor to go up against Ryan Yu. Uh, you just learned so much, and he helped me learn Telemann and Shizu uh, a lot as well, so a big thanks to him, and yeah, take care everyone.